Good evening, everybody out there in COT. You had to forgive me. <clears throat> right as that was ending, Angela was calling at the same time. Go figure. But I did tell her to call, so if you guys hear me talking to Angela live on air, don't worry about it. All right? Don't worry about it. She's running around doing appointment things. Folks, tonight, tonight is Wednesday. Wednesday, I reserve the right to go off the rails even further than I have gone off the rails. So who knows what comes out in our Wednesday discussions. But sometimes it's a very sobering and serious topic. Sometimes it is. Other times it's very, um, it's 100% spiritual. Sometimes, often, we begin to challenge those things that have been in your life to question things that have been in our lives. To extract the truth of our Father. To see it. Like finding out what is this beast thing about. I'm going to start calling the beast and the Antichrist something else. I'll no longer use those words in the future. I will not. They will change. If the Lord lets me live in the future, that will change. I won't speak the word beast. I'm going to give it a name of something else to call it what it is. Mm, interesting word, though, beast. Beasts are vicious, unpredictable. Beasts have characteristics other than that which was designed. Beasts, beasts are beastly. The word implies an animal. Or he, too, would be called a living creature, but that's not what it's called. It's called a beast. A beast. The Antichrist. The beast. How many of you definitively know there are two beasts, not one? Are you guys aware of that? Most people don't know that. There are two beasts, not one. Most people think it's one beast, right? They, call, they say that the Antichrist... The people, here's how people name it. They say there's an Antichrist, right? There is a beast, right? And there is a false prophet. You guys have heard that before? That's not right. That's nowhere in the Bible. I'll tell you what it is. It's a first beast. It is a second beast. And there is the dragon. Those are your three components. Now, to start this premise, to start this out, I need to read something to you. All right? Because a lot of people say, wait a minute. I never heard that before. Well, you never read the other one either. You didn't read that. That's nowhere to be found in the Word of God. There's just nowhere to be found. So I'm going to share something. And see, this is, listen, folks. This is what I'm talking about, how that we receive things that were handed down generation to generation, or somebody sounded like they knew what they were talking about, but nobody else investigated. God has given us the ability to go to his word directly that no man may deceive us. All right? I'm going to read something to you out of Revelation 16, 13. You ready? Are you ready? You ready? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to, to the, to the uh, battle of the great day of God Almighty. What did you hear there? The three unclean spirits inhabit who? The dragon, Lucifer, that old serpent called the devil. Who else? The false prophet. Who else? The beast. Three. Three. How many see this? How many are still not sure? You have to know this before we go forward. I want you to give me some feedback, letting me know if you're ready or not. Don't worry. I'm going to give you something else. Because where it talks about the beast is what I'm about to read so that we can move on so that we can actually begin to see. You need to see what the beast system is. You need to see what the beast is. You need to know about the dragon that people have been worshiping for many years. All right? Worshiping for many years. 
They're already worshiping dragons. Three unclean spirits inhabit what? The dragon, number one, right? The dragon. Another one inhabits what? The beast. Another one inhabits what? The false prophet. By the way, in Revelation, this is the only place where you see false prophet. You start to hear about false prophet in the end. You don't hear that word, false prophet, in the beginning. That's not what you hear, and I'm about to read, clarify this to you. It, you know what, that slight thing is so incredibly important to know that if you don't know it, you're going to err in your understanding. You won't be able to see. You won't be able to see. You'll begin to misjudge, point fingers, and all these other things. And by doing so, if you're wrong about who is who, you can't identify who is who. That means you may spiritually know who is who, but with your eyes will deceive you. You won't be on it. Turn to Revelation 11. You guys turn to Revelation 11. No, I, 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 I take that back. Let's go, let's go to Revelation 13. All right, you guys with me? Revelation 13. Revelation 13. This is only to set a premise. But you have to know this before we continue. You guys with me? Revelation 13. And by the way, just to give you what we're doing. Many people have been taught. There is the beast. Right? There is the false prophet. Right? And the Antichrist. That's what they've been taught. The beast, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. That's what they've been taught. That's not what's in the Bible. In the Bible, there is the dragon, there is the beast, and there is the second beast. Now, I'm going to prove, I'm going to show you who the false prophet is and why he is called the false prophet. A lot of people forget that. They begin pointing at everybody saying, oh, that's the beast, that's the beast. How can they be a false prophet? To be a false prophet, you have to be a prophet of some type. Right? Don't you have to be a prophet? What is another word for prophet? Anybody know? Come on, some of my electronic dictionary camaraderie, my, my uh, friends in there. Go ahead and show it. What is another definition of prophet? Isn't a prophet one that speaks the words of God? Right? To prophesy is to speak the words of God. Right? False prophet is mentioned later on in Revelation, but it never uses that during the beginning. Revelation 13. Come on, guys, let's get ready. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, upon his, uh, having ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Okay? Now, many people don't understand the difference between the horns, the crowns, and the heads. That's why they can't understand that I, I see them make movies about someone who gets shot in the head and comes back to life. That is wrong, 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 wrong. That is not biblical. I think they did that to make money. Honestly, I, I do. I do. I think they did that to make money. And I, I'm not trying to tear down anybody's paradigm, but the word of God is free. Isn't it free? So enjoy the freedom of the word of God. Take in the truth. Discount all this other stuff. Okay? Discount all the other stuff. All right? By the way, this is what the beast looks like. Let's read that again. He saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Where did it come from? The sea. How many heads did it have? Seven heads. How many horns does it have? Ten horns. How many crowns on the horns? Ten crowns. What else is on his head? The names, the name of blasphemy is on his head. The name of blasphemy. I'm so shocked that many people throughout the past have never told anybody what that name is. Everybody focuses on the heads and the crowns and everything else, but they won't tell people what that name of blasphemy is. <clears throat> Do you know why? Because they were so interested on their findings. They were trying to paint a picture of what they understood by deduction, logical deduction. 
I'm telling you that information was passed down from the word of God by men deducing what it is. You don't do that. It is revealed spiritually. When you read the book of Revelation, you need to comprehend it by revelation. You don't break out a calculator. Don't start measuring dimensions. Stop referencing people who stood against the Lord but spoke very eloquently. Stop trying to perpetuate these ideologies of men and submit yourself to the Father and know the truth. You can know the truth directly from him. Who else looks like that beast? Well, let's go see. You don't have to go here. I'm going to read it to you. Revelation chapter 12. You can go here, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Let's see what he looks like. He has seven heads. He has ten horns. But he only has seven crowns upon his head. He's just like the beast. The dragon is just like the beast. Except the beast has ten horns upon the ten or ten crowns on the ten horns. The dragon has seven crowns on the ten horns. There's a reason for that. Revelation thirteen, let's continue. This is verse two. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Now listen, folks, when I'm reading this, just understand the animal. Stop trying to go deeper into it at this point. This, because if you go deeper on verse 2, you're blinded concerning the rest. You need to hear the whole thing first. You ready? And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Stop. Did you get that? The important part of the scripture is not, I submit to you, it is not that it was like a leopard who had the feet of a bear or had the mouth of a lion. That is not the, imp that's almost like a, um, um, I tell you, the way this is formulated is this, and you find this all throughout the scriptures. You will find something that captures the attention of flesh, something someone can identify with. If they focus on that part, by way of flesh, they have no understanding of what comes next, which is spiritual. And I've found that to be true in every single scripture. If something is understood by way of flesh, you can guarantee something after is spirit. Cam, don't get ahead of yourselves. We're getting there. Don't get ahead of yourself. So, the beast, the dragon, gave him his what? Power, seat, and great authority. What do you see here, guys? I'll tell you what you see. You see Satan unable to penetrate this realm. So what does he do? He makes a copy of himself in the world. And what is that copy called? The beast. Are you beginning to see? He couldn't penetrate. He could not penetrate. The veil in that respect, he wouldn't be effective. So what did he do? He made a copy of himself. That could touch everything. It's been a long time doing that. It also tells you that the dragon is a kingdom. My goodness. The dragon is a kingdom. The dragon is a kingdom. The dragon is a kingdom. We, you know, sometimes we are so blinded by flesh, we can't even see the truth of something. The dragon is a kingdom. Because the dragon has seven horns, or, or, or uh, seven heads, and ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. He makes a copy of himself, and what does he do after he makes the copy, crowning the other horns? He gives him its power, its seat, and its great authority. That's a transference of power. So he clones himself in the earth, and then transfers his power. Here was the goal here that he may make a copy of himself to work in this plane called reality, that he may grant to it his power and his dominion and his authority. You see, his power and his seat is his position. You see that? His great authority. Notice it did not say simply his mild authority. It said his great authority. He transferred all that. 
into this plane of reality? Is everybody on board? Do you see that? That's precisely what he did. One kingdom copied itself into another kingdom, and a transference of power took place. Thus, Lucifer is now both. Do you see that? Do you see? The kingdoms of earth, oh boy, the kingdoms of earth, and here's why some of you do take no pleasure in the kingdoms of earth, how they run stuff. Christians have a problem with how people run things, and I hate to tell them this, a true Christian will never be satisfied, no matter who is president, because it is not the Father's system. It's not. That system will never fulfill any Christian, period. Many have tried to support it. Many have tried to stand by it. Many have collectively right, lived by it, but they're never, ever satisfied. Never. Do you know why? Because it is not the Father's kingdom. And if they truly do belong to Christ, it will never settle with them. Who is the prince of the air? Let me, get, let me give you this, because a lot of people... They don't comprehend that these kingdoms of the earth right now belong to Lucifer. Let me tell you how. Because it, in the end, in, near another part in Revelation, it says, Now the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Which tells you what? Before that time, the kingdoms of this world are not, they do not belong to the Father. Do you guys see that? Do you see that? It's time that no one pull the wool over your eyes anymore. Now, if you serve a kingdom of Satan, how can you reap any good thing? You will not. There will be trouble in China, and you'll sit there and say, well, why is this stuff? It seems like I get so close, and then poof, it blows up in my face. What is this? Because these kingdoms are designed to wear you down. Remember it said he will wear out the saints of the Most High. How does he do that? Through the systems. And everybody missed it. The system is wearing you out. You go to church. You praise the Lord. You have prayer meeting. But you still have to go to work. You still have to make that money. You still have to pay your bills. You've been trapped into a lifestyle. You will never master. Because it is not of your master. The world. It's wearing you out. You ready? It says in verse 3, And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast stopped. Okay, number one. One of the heads was wounded to death, as it were, wounded to death. Right? One of his heads. The world wondered after the beast, like, wow. That deadly wound was healed. I can assure you that if a person got shot in the head and they came back to life, nobody's going to sit there and say, wow. They're going to say, wow, we have, good, we have good doctors, wouldn't they? We know it's not a person because along in the Bible it tells you it's not a person. It tells you what the heads are. It tells you what the horns are. It tells you what the crowns are. Do you know that? It tells you what all these things are. It tells you what they are. All right? Let's continue to read. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, hear me out. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power to the beast. They can't even see that if you go out into the world right now, and you ask an evil person, do you believe in the devil? They'll say no. That's what they'll say. They'll say, nah, there's no devil. There's just us. Get out of my way. In doing so, they're worshiping the devil doing his works. They're worshiping him. But they call him something else. The devil, all, the devil always is known by many names. Many, many names. The devil is. Right? But here's a disturbing part. They worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. They worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And then and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who's like unto the beast? This is, you know what this is? This is like not a fearful statement, but a bragging statement. 
That's what this is. Imagine this. I know a lot of people read like, who is likened to the beast? Who's able to make war with him? I don't read it like that. Number one, the world is arrogant. Number two, the world looks for a leader all the time to prop up. They are bragging on this guy. They're bragging on the system saying, who is like unto this? Who's able to make war with this? Who is able to go against it? Now, I want to define something. for Who is able to make war with him? First of all, that him is a bunch of nations. To go to war with something is to fight against it. Right? Is to fight against it. And they're saying, well, who can fight against this? Who can fight against it? Who can go against it? You can't go against this. I'm going to call the beast a kingdom. You can't go against this kingdom. No one can go to war with this kingdom. It starts to make sense once you call that thing what it is. It begins to make sense once you call it what it is. If you refer to the beast as a him, the first beast as a him, it throws your brain off. You're, you start to look for a person. That's precisely what has happened. Now, you guys are reading with me, right? You keep on reading with me. Because already you're probably saying, wait, hold up. Wait, I never saw that before. Wait a minute. It's because you listened to rhetoric that was passed down from those who sold things. And if you sell something, naturally, everything you say is going to support your own writings. Right? Everything you say is going to support your writings, or you're not going to have any book sales. Now you have to defend your first idea. If I, listen, if I wrote down some of my first ideas, I'd have to sue myself. I really would. Some of my first ideas were so far off that they're just stupid. I would have to sue myself right now. I'd, I'd make a lawsuit on myself. I said, well, he just deceived people. He needs to pay all the money back. I would. Because I'm certainly not going to support something of flesh. So I to myself, okay, let's continue to read. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is like unto the beast? They're smiling. Who is able to make war with him? They're smiling, have their chest poked out. Listen, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So it's so funny. Listen. Now, many people read this wrong, saying, well, he's not going to come until that specific time. You didn't read the book of Daniel. You didn't read the book of Ezekiel and the book of Isaiah. You didn't read it. Therefore, you didn't comprehend. See, the book of Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, they're keys in the book of Revelation. Now, let me read this to you again. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. What has happened in the world in the last 15 years or 20 years? I'll tell you what's happened. More and more they have booted Christ out of everything. They speak horrible things and make jokes about Christ. And you laugh with them. They mock the Holy Spirit. I know some of you like Medea. I do not. I don't like anything joking with the Holy Spirit. The spirit of the promise of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And they make jokes about it. And people think it's okay. That's blasphemy. Period. And they're getting away with it. Hmm. Why? Because there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Do you know there was a natural fear 40 years ago of anybody who would joke about the Holy Spirit? There's not now. There's not. You got people starting up new churches. Having church with a bar inside. Comedy shows inside of sanctified halls and things of this nature. It is blasphemy. And that power was given unto the beast to do that. Why do, you know, a lot of people say, well, I just need proof that the beast is here. Are you kidding? People don't reverence the Lord. Do you remember, you all, some of you all, that Sundays, 
there was no no businesses were open on Sundays. You guys remember that? You had better go to the store Saturday because nothing was open on the Sabbath day. Do you remember that? When everything shut down on the Sabbath day. Do you remember that? Do you remember the transition? And it was sending people through a shock. Even the people that were not Christians, they said, wait a minute, th that's the Sabbath day. You're going to curse your whole business. Do you guys remember that? And this was coming for people who were not Christian. Yet we sit up in our seats like we know everything saying, well, that, you know, this comes later. It's not right now. How foolish have we been? Blinded. Something rose in front of our faces. And even to this day, many people deny it's even here. So he was given power. He was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. That's emboldenment. He was emboldened, folks. Power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. That is his full. That is his fullness of exercising his authority. Listen to me. You've been alive for a long time. You, some of you have jobs. Some of you just got promoted. Thus, you can exercise authority for the first time in your life. Where you work at. Hmm? But you were working there for a long time. The beast and the dragon have been here. Right? The dragon's been here. He's been building his beast system. And guess what he's doing? Guess what happens? He's going to be given power to execute his authority. How long does it say? Forty and two months. How long is the indignation? Forty and two months, three and a half years. So he will be given power. Absolute power. And he'll be able to destroy wonderfully. Which is to say... Um, uh, uh, destruction that nobody can figure out. I mean, an absolute destruction. God gives that beast that power to do so. Right? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. That's what it did. By the way, this hymn is a kingdom. The kingdom! Put forth statements, ways of operation that were blasphemy against God. They spoke blasphemies against God. How many of you think that uh, a kingdom does not speak blasphemies against God right now? They do. They do. They speak arrogance. Blasphemy. Think one component of blasphemy. The original word is disrespectful. To disrespect God is to ignore or deny him. To deny God means they take credit for everything they do and give no credit to the Father. To give credit to the Father, you must acknowledge the Son. And if you don't acknowledge the Son, how can you acknowledge the Father without the Son? I'm telling you the truth. They do speak, speak blasphemies against God. They do blaspheme his name. They do it all the time. They won't, you know, I would be terrified to do this, and I know people don't even think it's wrong. I do. There's no way in the world I would stamp in God we trust on money. There's no way in the world that I would forbid people to use the name of Jesus of Nazareth or like Merry Christmas or anything like that and then say, God bless so-and-so. Are you kidding? That is hypocrisy at its root. That is a blanket statement acknowledgement and it is fake. They give no reference to the Most High. They're more interested on having their way go forward. That's why they fight one another. That's why everything is undone. And they blaspheme his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Whew. 
How do they blaspheme his tabernacle? And those that dwell in heaven, I'll tell you how. They tell people it's fictional. Well, how did they do that? They are the ones who sanctioned science, who sanctioned Darwin's theory. You can't get a scientific or research grant, archaeological grant, if you believe in what they call nonsense of non-evolution. The moment you stop agreeing with Darwinism, you get no more money. You're off. You're, you're on your own. And who does that? The same kingdom that people shed blood for. Do they worship the kingdom? Yes, they do. Worship is voluntary observance. I tell you now, men are worshiping idols. And they have justified the idol. Because we are, worship, we are to worship the Lord our God only. Nothing else. But they do worship the kingdom they're in, don't they? Put on your big boy pants and your big girl dresses. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Let me read that one more time. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Hmm? Who read that before? Who read that in truth? Some people read over that, skip over that. Oh, no, that's not us. We're not going to get hurt. Anything, nothing is going to touch us. You've lied to yourself and deceived yourself in saying so. The Father made it known that he was going to be given power and that he, he would make war with the saints and he would overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. That's, that's established. That's established. People are so afraid at this time, but let me bring you up to speed. The same people who are afraid of this have already gone through tribulation. The beast has al already made war with you. That's why things in life stand against you. You're the one that can't get the finances on time. You're the one that's unfortunate enough for things to go wrong in your life that the world fight against you. Seemingly, on a spiritual level, it has nothing to do with luck. It is a war. You're the one that looks at another person and you say, how can they not see that this is wrong? And why are they getting away with it? Because you're in the middle of a war. That's why. Are you beginning to see that there are a lot of beguiled people in the world, Christians, good people, that can't see it because somebody said, and they continue to say it's coming in the future. It's not happening now. Oh, it's not in our time. I guess they said that about the rains, too. Well, yeah, it's sprinkling, but no flood will come in our time. We don't even know what a flood is. What is this stuff? And it kept falling. Well, maybe it's just going to drive us up to higher land. Let's go up to higher land. They accommodated the rain, moved up to higher land. No big deal. We can just overcome it. And the floodgates burst. Fountains of the deep were opened. And then it was too late. They denied it until they were dead. You beginning to see? Those who deny the hand of the Lord die. They die. Hmm. Listen. He was given power over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now what you won't do if you're in the book of life is worship him. You will not. If you're in the book of life, you won't worship him. Because you're not doing it now. I, I tell you, you, there are many people who worship these kingdoms. I would be terrified to worship the kingdoms. It is not in me to do so. But many people do. 
They worship the kingdoms. They will part company with you over a kingdom. They have done so through Republicans and Democrats, and it's absolutely disgusting because that is something made by man. How can you part company? Because of something man made. That makes no sense. Hmm? And if you're found written in the book of life, I can tell you the truth. That can't make you part company with anybody. There are some who are doing that right now, but they are not to stay. Those trapped in this system. The waking up process is going to be violent. Thus, the beast will overcome them. They have to go through something because they're not awake. Your whole life, you have gone through things. That's why you're awake. Your life has been kapoopooed. That's what it's been. Kaput. Your life has been kaput. You thought you were getting somewhere. And all sorts of things sent you through a living H.E. double hockey sticks. That's why you're awake, because you no longer trust nor desire those things in the world. That's why you're awake, because you were beaten with many stripes. Things failed with you. You suffered both in the flesh and in the spirit. That's why you're awake. And if you're already awake, there's no need for you to go through those things. But if you're not awake and you still belong to the Father, you're going to be broken in this season. Do you understand now? For those who are awake, this stuff, they're not appointed to certain things because they are awake. You have to go through things that you wake up. Your flesh has to be broken. Everything connected to your flesh has been broken. Your love of the world broken. Your trust of the world busted up. You're worshiping people, putting people on a pedestal. Gone. Some of you had relationships and you favored the spouse more than you favored God, and it went terribly wrong, didn't it? Things had to be broken away from your flesh. Now you're awake. You were oblivious before. You know that process well. So what do you think is going to happen to those who are oblivious right now? They're going to be woken up. They have to awake. That is not an easy process. Why do you think in the, in the story of the ten virgins? Five woke up and were ready, had oil in their laps. Five had no oil. They didn't have enough. Why? Because it took you a lifetime to keep your flame burning. Do you understand? It took you a lifetime. You're burning right now despite those things that you went through. Do you understand now? So then, how can a person just now wake up and say, oh, give me that, give me the oil that my flame will stay burning? No, you've got to go live through something yourself. I can't give you anything. Hmm. You go buy your own. Because I tell you, that oil comes at a hefty price. You pay that price. See, I love the word of God. You may think it's complicated. But when you want to know who your father is and you're serious about the father, all things revealed. Nothing will be withheld from you. You paid a price to have your oil. Your flesh was broken, abused, molested, almost killed. You paid a price. Many of you lost your families. You've lost your marriage. Why? Because of your heart of hearts believing in the word of God, that's why. Many of you almost lost your souls so close to the edge. People have beat you up and cast you down out of their company because you didn't think as they did. Do you know what you were doing? You were purchasing your oil because that comes with a price. Just as you are bought with a price, the blood of the lamb, so did you purchase your oil. Those who are awake with no oil, the only way to get it is to go purchase it. They're going to have to pay a hefty price. Many of you have paid that price. Are you beginning to understand? Are you beginning to see it and understand what is real? You know what? Sometimes the word has no substance to it. 
and it seems you, you hear it read right, but it's, there's no confirmation within you whatsoever. You know it has to be true, but there's no confirmation. You know why? Because people have leaned onto their own understanding by way of flesh. When you tell something of flesh, there's no spiritual confirmation. You know it's true, you just don't know how it's true. Hmm? Then it says in verse 9, If any man hath an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Ah, this is a prayer answered. Let me tell you how. Jesus already said, In your patience possess ye your souls. Can't you see that in verse 10? The one who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Have you ever done something that you think is for the good of another person and it backfired right in your face? Especially in these days where now. Have you ever looked upon another person and you say, you know, this person needs such and such just for a little time and then they will see it and then they'll get out, but they don't go through it, you do. Hmm? You spoke something upon yourself. And the Lord says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Be patient for what? That the Lord will fulfill what he said he would fulfill. Stop wishing upon another. For them to experience the captivity you were in that they may know. Stop doing that because you'll go back into captivity. If you desire someone to experience your captivity, you're going to lead them into captivity. And then you yourselves must go back into captivity. Huh? People do this all the time. Oh, I just wish they could understand like I understand. Do you not know what you're saying? For you to understand what I understand means you have to go through certain things I have gone through. I wouldn't wish that upon a rat. But I want them to have the knowledge, not the experience. When you want someone to experience the pain you have gone through, you're turning rotten. You're turning rotten. And that thing is going to come down on your head. Are you beginning to understand? Huh? How rotten that is? Here it comes. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Aha. Uh -huh. We had the first beast. Here comes another. Now I'm going to take a pause right here. Swallow what we just went over. Highlight if you have to. Certainly go back and read and study this. Get it in your spirits that no one deceive you again. Never fight with someone saying, hey, I'm right, you're wrong. Stop doing that. You read the word of God for yourself. You eat from the table of which the Lord has provided and eat the manna, his word, his, eat that. That is food for you. But don't eat something and forget what you ate. Eat it. Remember it. Let it become a part of you and a part of your life and a part of your day. Let you know it and you'll begin to see more and more. You see, the Lord does this right before I take a break. Right? Here's what he does. Do you remember when he said, those, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase, those who seem to have a lot, right? Those who have a lot more is going to be added to them. Those who have a little, even that little bit is going to be taken away. Why? There's no reason you should just have a little. You should have a lot. Those who have very little didn't want. They did not desire it enough to obtain enough because the food is free. The food is free. So even that little bit that they have will be taken away because they should have had a lot. This is a buffet for the pure in heart. You may partake of it all you want. But the truth is people often don't want it. They want the sensationalism and not the truth. They want what makes them fit back into society. That's what they want. 
They want to be embraced by flesh only. That's why they have very little. And some of you had no choice. Because the Lord will never permit it. You tried and you were stopped. You know it and I know it. You were stopped from ever being conformed. Because guess what? Some of you have a bad reputation out there. Some of you are marked as being this cruel and, and just rotten person. That happened to you on purpose. It hurt your feelings, but it happened to you on purpose. It happened to you on purpose that you never go back because God wanted to save your soul. Why don't they tell people the truth? I'm going to take a break. I'll be, I'll be right back. Right after. Okay, everybody, we are back again. I know you guys were enjoying that score. Do you guys want to know why I like uh, music, the music I do? You ever wonder why I listen to that? Anybody ever wonder why? I'll tell you why real quick. You ready? I'm going to tell you why. When people are writing music for a movie, the composers and the directors often get touched by certain scenes of a movie by way of love. So then, when they get touched like that, they get in this, I don't like, there are certain types of scores I do not like. I don't like the violent type or the fighting type or the, you know, everything went wrong type. But when they begin to be touched by that, they convey their emotions by way of music. And it's always in a type of, of uh, inspirational tone, a beautiful story tone, right? So I like the music because it's meaningful and I can add my own story to it. But if they ever put words to it, they would just mess up the whole thing. Right? It mess up the whole thing. So these, the songs that I play are, are in fact scores to movies. That's what they are. Scores to movies. Um, so I, I, I like those because they put a lot of time in it and a lot of emotion. And um, I, I play the hopeful scores, not the hopeless ones. I don't like the, 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 um, uh, some of the other ones. Right? Somebody says, what about the Prometheus? What, what? Have no idea where you're coming from on that one. Prometheus? What is that? I know who Prometheus is, but uh, don't quite, don't get that one yet. <laughs> I don't get that one yet. Anyway, back, did you guys swallow everything on the first beast? We're about to go into the second beast. All right? Uh, once in, if you can clarify that, I can throw it in there while I'm uh, going over this, okay? But the uh, that didn't, um, well, it didn't sound right. I'm like that with music, by the way, because every time I hear something, the melody is okay, and I start thinking of what I want to think of, and somebody s starts singing, messes up the whole song. I didn't want them to sing, because then it messes up the picture I have in my head, Right? And guess what? Here's the funny part. I do not watch the movies from which the scores come. But I will I, I read the background on the score itself and how that the producer and, and the, the, uh, the artist or so-and-so was moved by it and what they were feeling like. And so I listen to it, and if I like it, I then listen to it. But I don't watch the movies. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Back to the second. Let's go over the second beast real quick. This won't take long. This is, I hope you guys are getting understanding, right? Now, if, if, if uh, I see you there, Kathy, if people are, if, if this is shocking, how many people are kind of, you're, you're kind of shocked a little you, you, because you didn't know this? How many people are shocked a little? How many? Anybody shocked, in, shocked by what they're learning here? Because a lot of people didn't know it. We just don't know this stuff. It's almost like Revelation is this book where everybody had their own interpretation, right? And they just didn't know the, the, uh, these things, right? Because they really think that the that something so simple as, as, as thinking that the false prophet and, and the beast and, you know, the false prophet, the brief beast, and the Antichrist are... are Three separate entities when that's not the case. So, listen, we read about the first beast. It's just the first one. We read about the dragon and the first beast. These are the two main ones, the two, the two named ones that the three unclean spirits come out of. Right? The, the, the dragon in 
and the beast. Here's the second beast. And I beheld, this is Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Stop. Stop. Pause. Pause, 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 pause. Pause. You guys ready for this? The other beast did not come out of the sea. The sea represents the people. The other beast came from the land. Uh oh. And he came up out of the earth. And he has two horns like a lamb. And spake as a dragon. Now, why in the world would someone add in there? Why would we be told that he spake as a dragon? Why? Oh, I see that one, Sin. I see that. We'll get to that later. But why would he speak as a dragon? Why would that have to be indicated for this one and not the first one? I'll tell you why. The dragon and the first beast, because the dragon gave the first beast his power, seat, and great authority. The second beast is so different that some of the properties of the second beast had to be made known. One of the differences is that it came from the earth. It came up out of the earth. It's very different than the first beast. It did not come from humans, from humanity. Right? It didn't came up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb why two horns like a lamb that indicates a prophet a holy person a person of faith a lamb a false christ come on and he spake as a dragon he spoke like the first beast and the dragon to speak like the kingdom speak he spoke the language of kingdoms, but he had two horns like a lamb. This person was a person with religious overtones, right? Listen, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly womb was healed. So this guy, listen to what he's doing. He comes up out of the earth, right? He comes up out of the earth. He exercises all the power of the first beast. What power did he have? Well, it says that the dragon gave the first beast his power seat and his great authority. So he control over all the kingdoms. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And in addition, he caused the earth and those that dwell within the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now that identifies that these are two different beasts. If he is the one that causes the earth to worship the first one, who causes anybody to worship anything? A religious figure. Oh, you don't believe me? You don't believe Who causes right now people to worship the kingdoms? Who does that? Ah, see, now is it a man that causes people to worship the kingdoms of this earth? No, it's not. It's something. It's not even human. What causes people to do that? Think about this. What makes a citizen fight for their country? What makes a citizen fight for their country? Are they fighting for the people, or do they fight for the ideology of that kingdom? Which one? Which one? Do they fight specifically for the people? Because if you fight for the people, you fight for all the people. Or do they fight for the ideology of the nation? To fight to establish a way. And who set that ideology up? Did it come from our Father in heaven? Or did it come from man? Hmm? Think about it. Because it's about to get so real. So incredibly deadly. Many will be. To, to people, it will be confusion of faces. I tell you the truth. He exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And then he causes all that dwell on the earth 
to worship the first beast. Listen to what else he does. And he does great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth inside of all men. Now this one is performing miracles. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the false prophet. The second beast, the false prophet, is the one that causes the world to worship the first beast. How do they worship the first beast? To worship a kingdom. What is a kingdom? Is not a kingdom its laws and standards? Huh? Isn't that a kingdom? Its standards and its laws. Therefore derived principles come from those two. Hmm? So then this false prophet causes men to worship what mankind made. My goodness, folks, listen to me. Can, can you not see something that is already taking place and being rooted deeply in people so much so they can't escape it? Hmm? They can't escape it. How can you escape something if you spend a lifetime defending it? How can you escape something that people accept as truth and they will accept nothing else? How can any man worship something that is not of Christ and say it's right? Because I'm telling you they're doing it. Are you folks beginning to see something maybe you didn't see before? See, to, in order to see like this, you, if there's no, you can't be biased. You're going to have to say, Lord, I'm going to look directly into you and not into anything else. And whatever you show me, though it be a truth, I know it could be painful or whatever, but I want the truth. When you want the truth, you can't justify any deeds of men. You cannot do that. Nor can you have worship of anything mankind made. You can't have that. You have to isolate yourself and stand back from all of what man did to see the word of God for what it is. You have to truly go in your secret place. Listen, he's doing great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in sight of all men, in sight of men. And he deceived them that dwelt on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. What is a sword? War. Which had a wound by war and did live. A country that was wounded by war but survived. A country that came back from the dead. One of the kingdoms that came back from the dead. Now we're getting somewhere. One of the kingdoms who should have died from the wound they had came back to life. Was reestablished. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we are. But, and what does this guy do? He's deceiving people by means of the miracles. By means of the miracles he had power to do. And sighted of the beast. He's demonstrating his supernatural qualities and powers. And people are looking at him saying he must be right. He must. And supernatural means anything above the natural. Right? People look with natural eyes all the time, which is why they walk around saying this is impossible, that's impossible, because they can't see the possibility. This guy makes the impossible a possibility. Not only so, he makes the impossible a possibility in view of all men. Hmm? And then what does he do? He tells the people that dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast which had the wound, my sword did live. So the people of earth make the image of the beast. He tells the people of earth to make an image of the beast. And guess what? If you read the book of Daniel, you'll find out that the people of earth made many images to this beast. That's very important. Let's go find it. Can we go find it real quick? <clears throat> Chapter 11. Let's go find it. Chapter 11. Come on, you guys with me? Here we go. Daniel eleven thirty nine. You ready for this? 
Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them, plural, to rule over many. He shall divide the land for gain. Let me tell you why he said that. He said, that it's, it, here's what it says in 36 of Daniel. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above God, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done, that is the time length of the trampling down of Jerusalem. And we can see in Second Thessalonians, right? Right? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a fallen way first, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. It's the same thing. But here's a twist. Let's find out about this false prophet. You ready? You ready? He's going to magnify himself above God, the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Remember, he was given power for 40 and two months. That's the time of the indignation. Keep following me. 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of a woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. That means this guy, if he's Islamic, will not regard Allah. Uh oh, see, I just messed everybody up. If the guy is American, he's not going to go with anybody. The, the, he, he wants people to praise him. Uh oh, see, that just messed everybody's mind set up right there. That just, just tore up all these other philosophies out there, just messed it all up. Let me read that again. 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of a woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Listen to what he does. 38, but in his estate, what is an estate? An estate is, think of an estate as a place of power, as a position. But in his position shall he honor the God of forces. The God of forces? Yeah. That's the new guy. The God of forces. That's why he does miracles inside of men. We'll get into that another day. But that's why he does things in view of men. And the God of forces is real. And it's a strange God. A God his fathers knew not. Something that is not recorded in history. It's not recorded in books. Or his fathers would have known it. See, I love the word of God. His fathers would have known it if it existed, but no one knows about it. His fathers didn't know it. Let's continue to go. In his estate shall he honor the God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, shall divide the land for gain. You guys see that? That was Daniel 11, 36 to 39. This guy, this guy increases the strange God with power and glory. He makes, listen, he makes a God can you see this? Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many. Wait a minute. So this guy, with a strange God, he made himself. Didn't it say he exalts himself above all that is called God? Stay with me. If he does that, and then he tells people to go out and make an image to the first beast, they're making the image... And he increases, right? Increases that thing in glory. A strange God. Because that strange God will act in his stead. Folks, are you with me? He made this God. He is the one that introduced this God whom his fathers did not know. This God came from him. 
then you have to understand this. He can see the first beast for what it is. He can see it for what it is. Because he is the one that comes up out of the earth. He comes up out of the bottomless pit. My goodness. And listen to this. He increases this thing with glory. And he shall cause them, plurals, more than one. He causes them to rule over many. And shall divide the land for gain. What did we just read in Revelation? And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which hath a wound by sword did live, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and to cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. What did we just read in Daniel? In his estate, he honors the God of forces. And then, not only that, not only that, he increases it with glory. He does this in the strongholds, in the powerful nations, with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them, plural, to rule over many. So then, the people of earth make a bunch of these things. But he is the one that grants it power to function. You, this sounds like a, you know, you can, I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere, but I don't want to see it openly. You know what I mean? I want you to look in this and see it for yourselves and let the Lord reveal it to you like he revealed it to me. But in truth, not in some fantasy, not in what we think is plausible, none of those things. But to see it, the simplicity of which it is. You already know of all the components. Each and every one of you know of each and every component already. Already. You already know. Tell your flesh to back up. Tell all the movies and all the songs and all everything you heard to go away. Meditate upon the Lord. Get rid of your imagination so that you can see truth. Imagination is not truth. He does this with a strange God. Who he acknowledges. And increase, he increases this thing, its glory. Right? Nobody knew about this thing. And the one with the two horns as a lamb who came out of the earth is the only one magnifying it. He is doing this. And he causes them to make an image to the first beast who had the deadly wound and was healed. We see this both in Daniel 11 and we see it in Revelation 13. Listen. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Hmm? So then, this thing is checking. Let me let me give you the let me give you the the simplicity of this. So we go back to the book of Daniel. He 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 listen, it says in 38, but in his estate shall he honor the god of forces. And a god whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. He he thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange god whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for profit. For profit. Are you beginning to see something that you didn't see? Because now we're talking about money. Who in the world? Now listen, a lot of people say, Ray Ups, E.T. It's aliens. But why would an alien need money? Huh? Think about it. He divides the land for profit. He causes people to make a mark, to get the mark so they can't buy or sell because he wants the profit. Folks, I hope you're listening to me. Why is it all of a sudden talking about money? The mark is about money. You can't buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is dealing with money. He divides the land for profit. This is a greedy dodo out here. 
because money controls the kingdoms. Money creates the miracles. Oh, you don't believe money creates miracles? Let me tell you what people do. A person in distress, they see nowhere out, no way out. All of a sudden, they look out on the front porch, and they see $20,000 bundled up. They don't know where it came from, but they fall on their knees, and they say, thank you, God. They don't know where it came from, because that money is the answer to their prayers. The money is. Not the comfort of the Father, because he already gave that to us in his words, saying, Take no thought of tomorrow, for today holds enough trouble for itself. The Father knows what you need before you ask him, therefore pray like this. So I'm telling you, it is not faith that is their comfort. It is money. Do you understand? Because if you pray, and the money does not manifest for you to take care of your problem, you're not being comforted. Huh? How in the world did that happen? Anybody ever contemplate that? <laughs> How far have we slipped? My goodness. This is the false prophet. This second beast with the two horns like a lamb is the false prophet. This guy worships a God his father knew, fathers knew not. He makes the world worship a God his fathers knew not. And what is the world worshiping? The first beast is what they worship. You know why his fathers did not know what he was worshiping? Because they didn't worship kingdoms, that's why. They worshiped the gods in kingdoms. This guy made the kingdom and its principles. And its laws, the new God of the earth. And you don't think it rules the earth right now? How can you kill? Let me give you an example. How many of you can kill the rule of law? Who do you know out there that can kill the rule of law? No one can kill the rule of law. Because it has a life of its own. You see how much we don't know? Do you all see how much we do not know? Because we keep looking at revelation by flesh and the components are far different. It is a mystery to the wise, to the flesh intellectual. It's open to the faithful, to the ones have truly, the ones that have truly renounced the world are no longer biased by the world. Therefore, they see the world for what it is. You're biased towards your father's kingdom. And everything that is not your father's kingdom, you know is going to pass away in a fervent heat. You know the Lord will destroy it. All the idols of the earth and of men will be destroyed. Are you all beginning to see? This is why it takes study. This is why you were unsettled. How many times have we gone through the book of Revelation, yet people still have these deep questions not being answered? Because it did not the writings, based on what you have heard, give no confirmation of the truth of the Spirit within you. And then when you hear the truth, the simplicity of the truth, you say, oh my goodness. That's what you say. Which means no man can speak a truth that was never truth in the first place. All of us are guilty of making up stuff that sounds right. There's a way that seems right unto man, but it's not. Hmm? And I'll tell you this. What is a delusion? Let me tell you what that is. If we always look at things as coming it's coming down the road we would never ever see what is here just like in your lives if you have hope for tomorrow right you're waiting on tomorrow I can assure you you want the day to end now those who want to get to the kingdom of God so bad want to leave right now they know nothing of the day because they're looking in the future. Hmm? That's what has blind. That's a delusion.
to love the truth is to break away from that, to break away from all these things, to not be biased for the world, but to be biased for the kingdom of God. Therefore, nothing, nothing, nothing is on the same level as your Father in heaven, and everything is well below it. And you know what's done by man so it can't be right. Is flesh good? No, it is not. So why would a thing of flesh be good? It is not eternal. Truth is eternal, not temporary. Truth is. Are you all beginning to see this? And this, I, I'm sorry I took so long. This is just the, the, the premise of these three components. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Or that false prophet is also the Antichrist. The Antichrist is also the second beast. The second one. Do you know why that's important? Anybody? As he wears out the saints of the Most High, that's how you know people are falling away like flies. He wears out the saints of the Most High. He's doing that right now. Through the world systems. It's the system itself wearing you down. A delusion is something that people can never realize is a delusion in the first place. Kind of like chasing riches. Wouldn't that be delusional? You're convinced you're going to get rich, but you never get rich. It's not appointed to you in your life. But because you see somebody else rich, you say it's possible and you chase it all your life only not to find it. That's living a delusional life. A delusion is... What? Your flesh mind. It is your flesh. So then to see things in the flesh only, to do things by the flesh only, is not to love the word, not to love the truth. If you love the truth, you'll walk by the truth. And what did the Lord say? God will give them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie, that they all might be damned who loved not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All those who love these kingdoms will be given over to that delusion. And I'll tell you the truth, you're going to see. You're going to see it. You're going to see it because you belong to the Father. And you're going to see people falling away at the, at the same time. You're going to see what the actual falling away is. Many have turned against the faith right now, but they still speak of Christ. They still say hallelujah. They still say amen. They still read scriptures, but they deny the power thereof. They still say and do things, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. They deny the power of Christ because if a person follows after the spirit and then they begin to deny they also doubt the spirit if you had proof on the left and faith on the right you may be inclined to look at the proof and doubt the faith but if you love the faith you don't care what the proof is do you understand now those who do not love the truth surely have pleasure in unrighteousness they are the ones who will be given over to a strong delusion and they will believe a lie they will take the mark of the beast because money is their God the kingdom is their God and you're seeing them worship their God a strange God a God that's not written down as being a God a brand new one and for a person to proclaim himself as God then he takes responsibility for what he has done in the earth and causes people to magnify that also. Mm -mm. Hope this gave you some understanding. We're going to need this because, you know, I just got to something here, certainly because this deals with money. Who would have thought, did you guys ever think that? Did you guys ever read the part where it said, you know, buy and sell, save he that had the mark. He'll divide the land for profit. This is talking about money. This guy's greedy. 
right? Why would an alien be greedy over money? Because a lot of people say, ooh, it's aliens coming. You have no idea what's here. See, what's going to happen when the veil bursts, you'll be able to see what was working all the time. That's what's going to scare the peanuts out of your M&Ms. They've been at work all the time. You'll get to see the principalities and powers, and you'll see the spiritual wickedness in high places. You're going to see it. Just as demons are all over the face of the earth being unseen, when the veil is gone, you'll be able to see them. Men will hide in their homes in the corners, saying, Who knows the Lord? Go get them and bring them here that we may live and not die by these things. All those who doubt at the spiritual realm will taste of a true cruelty. Because in their time where they could have used faith, they rejected it. And they worshipped another god. They had chance after chance after chance. They rejected it. The Antichrist did not rise by himself, but with a legion. Legions, plural. Hmm. Folks, I want to say God bless you. Now look, I'm going to continue this conversation. Um, you know, chances are, I don't know if Heidi's on tomorrow night or not, but I may do this tomorrow night going into Saturday, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> you got to get your eyes prepped for what you're about to see, what you're about to undergo, what you are about to learn and it won't be from me, nor will it be from anybody you're used to listening to. It's going to be from your children, your relatives, the very ones who said you were crazy, who are going to tell you everything you, you're going to have a hard time believing yourselves. So I hope you're ready. I really hope you're ready. Bond, are you ready to go on now? Well, we can go ahead and flip you over now, Bon. That's okay with me. Folks, I want to say God bless each and every one of you. Listen, I hope I wasn't talking gibberish or was overly bold, right? Those statements that I make sometimes, but you'll have to forgive me. I, I get passionate because the truth, that, listen, man is not your savior. Jesus is. Now, I desire to point people to Christ, not point them to me, but to Christ. Kathy, it's changing our atmosphere fast. More on that Saturday. More on that Saturday. I have told all I can tell about that, and the effects are being, they're, they're manifesting. So it's going to kind of be like, um, well, I've told people that there's, they're going to have a hard time, hard press tracking some things, but the evidence will be in the flesh of men. A massive sickness will sweep this globe. Dryness, no one has ever, I know people think that it's going to be uh, wet and soggy in certain places. No, listen, the drought is just beginning. It's going to be bad. The drought is going to be horrific. I know it looks like that's not the way it's going to be. I know it does. But I'm telling you now, it's going to be horrific. It's going to shuffle itself all over the earth. Many will fall down slain because of the drought. Heat will become unbearable. Since we started COT, we've also been tracking temperatures, and I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now. You don't even know it. These have been the hottest years on record. And the trending line is going almost straight up. It's, it's, it's rising super fast. The lumen, listen, the, the luminous of the sun has increased so much. It's almost imperceivable for the eye, but the sun's brightness has increased a lot. You can track that through a, a network of light sensors that actually do a photon count. And I'm telling you, the sun is extremely brightness getting brighter. And it's also growing in size. The sun is getting bigger. And 
they're not telling anybody a thing. They're bringing up these foolish things to talk about. Foolish things that keep people grounded here to make all other things look like nonsense. They're not going to tell you anything until something takes your life from the very things Christ prophesied about. From the very things God gave to his prophets so that you would have them. Do you not know this Bible was meant to be in your hands? The question is, are you getting into your Bible for the truth? Hmm. Folks, I want to say God bless everybody. I'll see everybody hopefully Thursday, maybe Thursday. I will not be on Friday. So, but I will be on Thursday. If, if at all possible, I'm going to be here tomorrow morning to do an Enoch study. Probably about, uh, probably about, um, that'll be 9 Central Time or 9.30 Central Time, somewhere around there. Okay. Or, or 10 or 10.30 Eastern Time. Okay. If at all possible. So, I mean, come on there. All right. Other than that, get ready for Larry Bond. He's coming up next. On COT and do this tomorrow. I'm also going to talk about Friday, and and just just a just a thought I'm going to give you, because you're children of the kingdom, and you're valued by the Creator. You're highly favored by the Creator, and your Creator, your Father, has set up life for you so you could come home. Understand, He's your Father. Don't let anyone cause you to spit in the face of your father. Don't make them make you do deeds that you shouldn't do. Focus on your father. Do not let your flesh rise up. Now we get into the time where your flesh will be either will be either pain or an utter destruction to you if you reap things of your flesh it can overtake you and destroy you that means you'll suffer for the rest of your life don't live that way I think we have suffered enough to gain the knowledge don't throw don't throw this race you've ran so long don't stop now don't throw it all away don't do it Don't let doubt win in your life ever again. Don't do it. Stay, stay mindful of Jesus of Nazareth and subdue your flesh. Die to its desires. Stop reacting by flesh. Through Christ you have the power to do so. Each and every one of you have power to die to your flesh every single day. It's time for us to do it and to go forward in the word of God that we be in our rightful positions truly written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. We are not appointed to worship anything in this earth. But you're going to see many people worship things in the earth. And when they worship things in the earth, violence ensues. Many of us will become enemies after Friday. Some people will suffer the ultimate after Friday. This is the part the public will not see, but you will hear about. And you will not believe what you're hearing. Stay sober. Stay sober, and God bless each of you. Stay tuned for Larry Bonney's coming up next right here on COT. God bless.